Welcome to Eye on the Bay. I'm Brian Hackney and he's Liam Maitland. Joy of joys, it's that unplanned, unexplained road trip that we call Point A to Point B. Where we begin, where we end up, we don't know. But we've got all of these little cities and slips of papers in the Bay Area and we just draw them at random. And so, Liam, where are we drum starting? Drum roll, please. Can where we have we a drum roll? Do you hear the drum roll? I do. There well, it is. Where are we starting from? All right, here we go. Well, point A. Cupertino. And point you know Cupertino? B, I have been there many times, home yeah. of Apple Computer. San Gregorio. <gasps> Cupertino to San Gregorio this Wonderful time. Wonderful place, San Gregorio, small little beach town. Great, great, great. You know some stories about these things. Oh, yeah, now, there's uh, a few things to show up there. We can't do it right now. We're going to do it. We're going to begin 24 hours from now because we need to research where we're going to go from Cupertino to San Gregorio. Yep. And we are not doing it in the MG. Yes, sadly, Brian's MG is in the shop, so we visited our friends at City Rent-A-Car, a great place in San Francisco to pick up something snazzy for a weekend. Or a uh, point A to B road trip. Well, our friend Ruben, our producer, said he'd bring us something exciting, and look what we have! I have to say... It's a Mini! It's not a British automobile, but it is a fake British automobile. From City Rent-A-Car, this is an absolute beauty. It is gorgeous. Ruben, full marks. Thumbs up, sir. Yes. I have to say, it's almost sexier than your little MG, Brian. Well, almost being the operative word, and it does have airbags. Yeah, All right, wonderful. So give us 24 hours, and we're going to begin this trip. You ready? I'm ready. Let's research. After making a few calls, we chose this route. From Cupertino, we'll go through Saratoga to Highway 9. We'll stop at a winery or two, and then head to scenic Highway 35, which will take north all the way to Alice's Restaurant in Skylander. Then we'll dip down 84 through La Honda and Pescadero. Then it's up Highway 1 to Point B, San Gregorio. Well, we begin in Cupertino, and when you think of Cupertino, of course, we usually think of Apple Apple's. Computer. Yes. yes, we do. Yeah, well, it used to be one huge fruit orchard after all, but now it's changed a little bit. The orchards are gone, replaced by busy boulevards, no real downtown district per se, just high-tech headquarters and many malls. It's about the fifth of the size of San Francisco, 10 square miles, population about 55,000. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and obviously home of Apple Computer right now. Do you think we can get Steve Jobs to come you know, down out of the ivory tower? No, Mr. Jobs. No. No. He refused to. We actually did try to get him to talk to us, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> he, said, he said, who are you? Yeah. Brian, who? Liam, who? Yeah, right. Did you get a MacBook Pro? Did you get a tower? No. Did you get an iPod? No. What'd you get? You know what? I went to one of the biggest, biggest computer companies in the world, Apple, and all I got was this lousy pen. All right, Brian, well, why are we here? What's so special about it? Because we have to eat. Another landmark. Yeah in Cupertino is Hobie's. It's a, it's a, a small chain. Have you ever been in a Hobie's? You know, I never have been in a Hobie's, You've but I know... You've never done anything if it's not in San Francisco. Well, no, I, I leave the boundaries of Hobies, San Francisco. You know why I know Hobie's? Because there's a Hobie's at Cal Poly, yeah. down in San Luis. And I know that the coffee cake here is spectacular. Yeah, you yeah. read that on the internet. And here it is, the famous Hobie's coffee cake. And I'm here with a famous resident of Cupertino, the honorable former mayor of this city, Sandra James. Sandra, firstly, I have to ask you, what's so special about the coffee cake? Well, the smell to start with. Doesn't yeah. it smell like Grandma's Kitchen you know what? to you? It it's really wonderful. does. It, just to prove that Sandra knows this town, look at this. This is actually her office of sorts, because right here, Sandra, this is where you conduct your public business. Tell me about this town. What's it about? Who lives here? Cupertino uh, was an agricultural town which has grown now into an international city. We have a 40% Asian community right now. Uh, people move here primarily for the school district. It's the hot, one of the highest rating school districts in the country. Thank you for inviting us to your office right here. You're welcome. And can I take this for Brian? You may take that for Brian. And can I take this uh, for Brian? You may. And the fruit plate's wonderful too. You can have the fruit plate. Thank you very much. Good. Sounds good. Give me the Let's map. Go. There you go. Off we go. He doesn't trust me with the map. <laughs> but I'll get us there. Have you got the keys? I've got the keys. You got the keys. All right. Ah. God, this is an automatic transmission. What Sorry. A wussy transmission. Put that map down. Glorious Cupertino. Yes. Just past quaint Saratoga, we saw a sign for something called Hakone Gardens. It sounded worth a stop. How did 
did it all begin? It was begun by Mrs. Stein, who founded the San Francisco Opera Ballet and built, was one of the key builders of the Palace of Fine Arts. She sailed to Japan in the year 1915 and decided that she wanted uh, a country estate similar to a shogun or emperor's country estate. No kidding. So she, the builders for the Emperor of Japan's came here and built this site before America's entry into World War I. 1960, the city of Saratoga purchased it for $140,000. Can you imagine uh, that? Nope. 18 acres in Saratoga. So now, Hakone Gardens is open to the public. This is open to the public. So people can stroll the gardens, get some history. That's right. Wow. And really get a, a sense of serenity. It, it's almost like you are in the Garden of Eden. In Asia, just like in the Native American tradition, there's, you were not exiled. It's not the Abrahamic religions of Islam, Judaism, Christianity are religions of exile. You're exiled from the Garden of Eden. Here you never left. This became the principal film site for Memoirs of a Geisha. They filmed part of that here? Yes, they filmed many of those night scenes here. Wow. Was, we welcome people to participate and come and visit that. And I am stunned how few people here in Northern California even know Hakone exists. I had no idea yeah. myself, and I grew up 30 miles from here. You know, no trip, Brian, to Hakone Gardens would be complete without a little afternoon tea. A perfect uh, way to end the visit. Huh? For five dollars, tea for two, and uh, well, apparently you get some little nibbly bits as well. But you, you do actually here. To have, uh, taken if you want to know the truth, William off camera has been going. Can we stop and get a sandwich? Because the poor man is starving to death. I'm a little sure, I got a bag of peanuts. Thank you. That's yeah. uh, look at yeah. that. No, they're all yours. Five dollars. This is a real gem of a place. Of course, you know, during April, May when this garden is in full bloom. It's a spectacular place, still beautiful to visit any time of year. Though. And if you want to uh, get information about any of the places that we visit on our point A to B, log on to our website, cbs5.com slash eye on the bay. Here we go. Coming up next, a stop in wine country. Did you know that there is wine country in the South Bay? You know, Brian, I did not. Plus, we're gonna have lunch at a famous biker hangout. Welcome back to Eye on the Bay. We're on another A to B road trip, making our way from Cupertino to San Gregorio. Up and over the Santa Cruz Mountains. Where there are all sorts of gems, including a winery brand nestled up here in the hills above Saratoga, a little piece of wine country, a whole bunch of wineries around here. Yes, uh, and this one was built in the 1890s by a family who uh, moved over here from Italy. The Piketty family, hence Bacchetti Winery. Let's go sample the wares, shall we? Yeah, absolutely. Two Italian brothers came over and uh, built their dream here in the valley. So Leslie, when you venture up here, there are a number of different buildings. Are they all old historic buildings? Is there a story behind them? Yes, almost all of them are on the National Registry of Historic Buildings. This farmhouse was built in the 1890s and the two Pacchetti brothers lived in it. And they both married. And the names of their wives was both Teresa. And the two women didn't exactly see eye to eye in a culinary sense. So that house has two kitchens, one for each wife. Down below here underneath this is our barrel room, and that's where they were making the wine 100 years ago and where we do it today. Well, here's to another 100 years. Piketty Winery, Saratoga. Thank you very much. Cheers. <laughs> All right, you can drive. He's been kicked out of the driver's seat. Look at that guy. Look at that guy. How are you doing? I love this road. Why don't, you, why don't you tell everybody where we are now that we've left the winery? Where are we headed? Uh, we are on Highway 35. Yeah. Uh, we are heading towards Sky Londo. Look at this. Wow, what a view. Oh, look, look, look what we see below. OK. Uh, uh, that? Uh, Stanford. Stanford, beautiful. Yeah. Uh, what's this? Uh, that's my Aunt Fanny's house. <laughs> that's actually Moffat Naval Air Station is Moffitt, right. Yeah. What is, what is this large protuberance over here on the, on the ridge? That little bump over there, what is that? Uh, that big protuberance yes. is uh, your hair blowing in the wind. But where? I can't see. See right there, that hill, that big hill. Uh, you know, my eyes don't go that far. Well, that's Mount Tam. <laughs> it's a uh, Mount Diablo. Oh, right there? You know yeah. what that is? Yeah, oh, no. Mount Diablo. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't know that, did yeah. you? Yeah. No. Yeah. Check out this prank we pulled on Ruben, our producer. Watch okay. the windshield wipers. So we, uh, we had, um... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting it too. So we took Highway 35, AKA Skyline Boulevard. Yes, yes, yes. To where it hits 84. At this junction sits a favorite eatery for weekend warriors, Alice's Restaurant. 
Andy? Yes. You own the restaurant? I, it's my brother and I that okay. own the restaurant. Okay. We are breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So breakfast are everything from omelets to French toast to steak and eggs, burgers, soft tacos. And man, this place has a lot of history. Tremendous amount of history. The building is 100 years old. Um, it was originally uh, built to support the logging industry here. In 1960, a uh, gal by the name of Alice Taylor bought it, and it became Alice's Restaurant. Okay, and it's been a restaurant ever, ever since. since. Okay, I just have to ask you, is this the Alice's Restaurant of Arlo Guthrie fame? It is not. It's Every, not? Everyone thinks it is, but it is not. Um, that actually is back in Stockbridge, Massachusetts. Why does this place have such enduring fame? It is kind of out here in kind of the middle of nowhere. We're, we're 35 minutes out of San Francisco. You're 15, 20 minutes out of Palo Alto. You've got, people want to get away from it. This is not a very far drive for people to get away from at all. Brian, so kind of you to share the table with our our good cameraman. Chris Bellini over there and our producer Ruben Manis and and, uh, and you can see the poor guy who has to shoot all this, Scott Wicks. Yeah. Hello Scott. Scott. So, can we dig in now? Well yeah, only if you give me an eye roll. Come on, I want a mmm and an eye roll. Mmm. You're hired. I okay. learned from the best. I guess I'm having the tacos. <laughs> Come on Ruben, give me an eye roll. I want a mmm and an eye roll. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, La Honda is next. La Honda is next. Yep. Off we go. Coming up, we search for the house of a famous author. And guess what? What? We find it. Welcome back to Eye on the Bay. We're on an improvised road trip from Cupertino to San Gregorio. Last you saw us, we were maneuvering Highway 84. And now, we arrive at tiny La Honda. See, you always know when someone new is coming into the bar, the sound of the floor, listen to this. Uh, Applejack, how did it get its name? Well, in about 1873, this place used to be a blacksmith shop and um, the owner of the shop had a donkey, and apparently his name was Applejack. Yeah, uh, there is a, a target out the back there on the side of the building. What's that about? Every other Wednesday, we have what we call the uh, Loggers Olympics. Huh. We've had axe throwing, hatchet throwing, two-man saw contest. And you see a lot of the same faces, see these guys at the end of the bar? Oh, yeah. There's, the there's Phil and Squeak. I see them a lot. Phil and Squeak. Across the street at the Pioneer Market, we found another honcho of La Honda. As for the history of the town, the man who wrote the book on the subject quite literally is Bob Doherty. And how many people live here? There's probably about 1,500 now, 2,000, something okay. like that. And you've certainly had some characters over the years. Let's have some characters, right. Yeah, and what, what comes to mind immediately, of course, is Ken Kesey used right. to live here. Writer Ken Kesey rose to fame in the 60s for his novels like One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, which he based on his experience working at a hospital in Menlo Park. Kesey also led a group of hippies known as the Merry Pranksters, notorious for their LSD parties and their crazy painted bus. I wonder what happened to the house. I mean, Mr. Kesey passed away about five years ago or something. But, right, right, um, a little more than that. Yeah. There's a, a gentleman by the name of Terry Adams, actually, and uh, if, if I can get a hold of him, actually, maybe we can go to the house. If we could go see it. the famous Ken Kesey house? Maybe, I'm not sure. Let's give it a shot. Let's try it. Okay. And what do you know? We did get a hold of Terry, the man who now lives in the Ken Kesey home. And he was kindly willing to let us take a peek. When did you buy the house from Ken Kesey? 1997, and we tried to preserve it kind of as a monument to the Kesey phenomenon. When you first met him, tell mm -hmm. me about the man. What kind of guy was he to you? Extremely overbearing, theatrical. Um, what do you mean he was overbearing <laughs> and theatrical? Exactly that. <laughs> was there much evidence of, of Ken Kesey and the pranksters in the house. Parts of the original bus were here. All kinds of stuff. What's the oddest thing that's happened regards visitors coming looking for Kesey? Oh boy. Well, one, we got a confession from some people that they had stolen some things that belonged in the house and they gave them back to us. And it turns out the stuff they gave us was not from the house. I mean, <laughs> the people had gotten confused. That was Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, I think I may have stolen something from your house. <laughs> really? This is where it all happened? This is where it all came down. That's and I'm assuming that this was left over from Mr. Kesey. Yes. What? 
This yeah. is one of the uh, the doors that he was famous for painting in the house. Uh, First party at Ken Kesey's with Hell's Angels. And four police cars parked outside the painted gate, red lights revolving in the leaves. Allen Ginsberg, December 1965. What's the coolest thing about uh, living here in this house? To be um, part of some kind of literary tradition, social movement um, that I personally was uh, at least on the periphery of when I was a younger person. Yeah. So, yeah, I feel proud that I was able to preserve this place. Well, Cherry, thanks for sharing your home with us, a little piece of pop culture right here in La Honda. Oh, yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah, we'll come back. All right. All right. Well, thank you. Good to have you. Lots of fun. Yeah. Up next, a perfect piece of pie in a cozy tiny town. And barring a last-minute disaster, it could happen, we reach point B, San Gregorio. Welcome back to Eye on the Bay. We're wrapping up another A to B road trip. Indeed we are. We're in the Santa Cruz Mountains. Brian, does this look familiar? Yeah, look where we are. Loma Mar, a tiny town uh, that Brian knows very well. Yes, because we covered it in our Tiny Town series, but if people want more info about that... Well, they can go to our website, cbs5.com slash Eye on the Bay, or just watch the Tiny Town show. Right, but white and red, we don't have time right now. Pescadero. A great little town, so cozy and comfy, you can wear pajamas in public. Look at this, here we are, Pescadero. Pescadero, Duarte, they make the best Do pie. they? How would you know? Tim Duarte, good to see you, sir. Nice Is that how you pronounce you, it? Yeah, Duarte with a silent E. What's unique about this place? It's old. I mean, we have been here for four generations, and um, uh, people walk in here and their mouth just drops open. People travel great distances to taste Duarte's half-and-half half soup. Half artichoke, half green chili. And then the two flavors are mixed together and everybody loves it. And then your lullaberry pie is to die for. It's a version of blackberry and we sell, it's a number one seller by far. What is life about here in Pescadero? Oh, I think life is about enjoying the natural uh, fresh air and beauty, for sure, and uh, not having to drive in any traffic at all. You're enjoying that soup, aren't you? A toast to the point of be. Okay. There's no ships like tall ships. There's no ships like small ships. The best ships of all are friendships. Liam, uh, I've got a great uh, outing. Warming the cockles in my heart. Outside, we ran into some of my fans. Yes, the people. Oh, they love their Liam. Are you regular visitors of Pescadero? We are. What Almost you... every week we come over here. Right. They have a wonderful sandwich at the back of the deli there. Archangeli, country store, it's a fantastic it place. It is fantastic. Great and deli. What, what did you pick up? A, the fresh bread. It's the artichoke garlic herb bread. Beautiful. We'll have something to eat on the way. Or... Absolutely. Point B. Off we go. From Pescadero, we hit Highway 1 and the jaw-dropping beauty of the Pacific Ocean. From here, it was just a hop, skip, and a jump north to our final destination, Point B. This is it. San Gregorio. I have to tell you, not too much here. Uh, it's basically this right here. There's the post office, San Gregorio General Store, and that's about it, right? Maybe we should go in and talk to some of the locals. You want to do that? It's, it's the general store here in San Gregorio. It really is the heart of the town, isn't it? It is the hub of the community. On the weekends, we have great music, uh, excellent bands. They genuinely like people here. It's not like you don't have to qualify or anything. You know, They don't care who you are, what your name is. How would you describe life in San Gregorio? Life, life is very nice here. Uh, you know, it, it, it kind of got tumbled around a little bit when, when the Silicon Valley was going on because you had all these billions of dollars of stock money going in. These kids would drive over the hill and they'd, they'd look up the road and say, well, that's a nice house. How much is that worth? The next day you find out the guy you were talking to at the bar just bought 40 acres, you know? Yeah. And I've done a lot of traveling myself and been a lot of places and I always enjoy coming back here. There's one more thing, San Gregorio Beach. To the beach, Brian, to the beach. Well, I'm afraid that we've hit the end of the road because we can't go much further than the Pacific Ocean. Yeah, this is our point B. We started out 
point A in Cupertino and we ended up here in San Gregorio. And if you want any more information about any of the stops that we made along the way, what should people do? They should go to our website, our glorious little website, cbs5.com slash I on the Bay. We found some new places, discovered some new faces. You could do the same thing and we hope that you do and we really appreciate your watching. I'm Brian Hackney. I'm Liam Makeslam. See you next time. Good night. Surf up? Yeah. Want to? Sure. After you. Let's go. go. <laughs> it's summer! Promotional consideration provided by City Rent-A-Car in San Francisco.